everyone. Welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk Back. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at your responses to the question, how do we feel when a game ends in a tie? Do we like it? Do we not like it? Do we like it some of the time, but not all of the time? <laughs> I suppose those are really the only three possible options. So one of them has to be right, right? Well, I don't know, because I know last episode, I was really unsure how I felt about it, and I think some of you were too. But let's take a look at what some of you had to say. So Pete Hardenberger wrote, a draw could be good if the battle was hard fought and deserved. Winning a close game is always the most satisfying, and losing a close one is okay too. But having multiple people win seems like a fake conclusion, and everyone gets a participation ribbon kind of feel. Of course, this all depends on what game and what the situation is. <laughs> Ultimately, I always find it it's just another reason to fire up the game again and settle the score. <laughs> so even Pete, I think, was struggling with, how do I really feel about it? Do I like it? Do I not like it? The comment about ties and having games end in a shared victory, feeling like par participation ribbons, was brought up a few different times. This was something that people related the two things to, which I thought was interesting. There's, there's kind of a sentiment that goes along with it that says, Listen, if there's not a clear winner, what's the point at all of playing the game? So with that in mind, let's see what Tom Williams has to say. I'm quite okay with ties. For me, it's the journey I enjoy the most, not necessarily winning. Don't get me wrong, I love winning, but games are about enjoying who I'm with, not just the outcome. That was another really popular sentiment. Uh, if everyone's having a good time together, does it matter whether it's a shared victory or it's a tie or whatever? Well, listen, Dennis Ryan provided us with a video that talks a little bit more from this perspective. Let's see what he has to say. Hi, Rodney. So for me, board games are a social hobby. I don't play deep strategy games or games that take three or four hours to finish where a clear champion is really important after committing all that time to the game. Instead, I enjoy short, fun games that last about an hour co-op games, or games where there's player teams, like Battlestar Galactica, where most of the time somebody shares a victory regardless. Personally, I'm always happy to share a victory with a friend, or more often than not, watch two friends share a victory themselves. That said, in games where ties do happen, because they don't bother me, I usually let the table decide. If everyone had fun, and they're congratulating the winners, then it doesn't matter, even if I know there's tiebreaker rules in the rulebook. But if someone asks for them, I'll dig them out and break someone's heart. Oh. And, by the way, great shirt. A lot of people agreed with Dennis, saying that knowing specifically who won the game didn't really matter to them as long as the people around the table were having a good time and it created a fun gaming experience. Now, <laughs> that's not to say that people who want to know who the definitive winner is aren't interested in having fun around the table. I'm sure they are. I just believe that for them, part of the fun is in specifically knowing who won the game. Josh Duvall wrote, I feel tiebreakers are absolutely necessary for games just in the sole fact that it will change the way I play the game. An easy and common example I can use is if money is the tiebreaker and the game is nearing the end, I will make the trade two resources for one coin move that is normally a suboptimal play during the game, but it gets me that little bump to win in the end if there's a tie. Well, that leads to what I think is another common thread that I heard in people's responses, and that is, they like tiebreakers if there's something meaningful about it. In other words, if it plays into the game mechanics or is part of the core strategy of the game, not something that's arbitrary. Uh, Durid Bowen wrote on, on that matter, For me, the tiebreakers need to make sense within the play of the game. In Splendor, the player with the fewest cards in their tableau wins ties, which makes thematic sense because it rewards a more efficient machine. Destrio wrote, in general, games that include tiebreakers should have meaningful ways to break ties. Sometimes when I see a game that has money or a resource that breaks ties, I'm not entirely sure if it's rewarding efficiency and better play or just having something arbitrary there. And I know when I've played games, sometimes I get to the end and we have a tie and we go to the tiebreakers and we're like, really? The person who picked the most flower wins in this train building game? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? I, that's not actually a real example, but you know what I mean. Something, something at the left field, it seems like, is a tiebreaker rule. And, and you do wonder, like, is, is that just the designer at the end going, well, I guess we didn't come up with tiebreaker rules. Let's throw something in there quickly. I think people want something meaningful. Or at the very least, humorous. <laughs> so people gave some options of 
Some tiebreakers they thought were funny. Let's go through a couple of those. Tabletop Owlbear wrote, my favorite tiebreaker is in evolution climate. It says that if there's still a tie after all of the normal tiebreaker rules, then you immediately order pizza and play again. <laughs> Yet another board game channel wrote, my favorite non-tiebreaker rule is from Steampunk Rally. After its normal tiebreakers are resolved, it states if there's still a tie, the game ends in a draw and the tied players form a bitter lifelong rivalry. Oh, that's a little dark. I think sometimes that happens naturally, whether the rules say that or not. Vassal Mihilov wrote, Arboretum wins the award for best tiebreaker rule. In case of a tie, both players have to plant a tree. Where <laughs> Whosever tree is the highest after five years wins. That one by far got the most thumbs up. A lot of people like that Arboretum one. It's unique. And you know what? It's good for the environment. So I guess win-win. Omer Hertz wrote, not sure if it was mentioned already, but 1775 Rebellion had a very appropriate tiebreaker, considering Rodney's nationality. It says, in case of a tie, the U.S. becomes a province of French Canada. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty good one. I, I like that one too. So I guess maybe what we can say there is, listen, it, designer, if you don't have a good reason for your tiebreakers, at least make them funny. Uh, that said, Roy from Epic Gaming Night had a funny tiebreaker and it didn't really solve things for him. Let's take a look. Hey Rodney, it's Roy Kane here. I think tiebreakers in games are definitely very important. It's good to have good, solid tiebreakers in your rules and make sure to plan for what happens when a game gets tied. I remember playing a game of undermining a while back and it was a really close game in between me and one of the other players and we ended up tying as far as the normal rules, as far as points go. So we went to the rule book to figure out who one with the different tiebreakers and the only tiebreaker that the game gives you is it says to go out in the backyard and the first person to dig a 10 foot hole is declared the winner of the game and i'm still not quite sure who won the game i know that i haven't dig a 10 foot hole yet but if i go out in the back right now i might be able to win the game of undermining that i played a few years back anyway i think tiebreakers are definitely very important for designers to put into their game and to have multiple tiebreakers so that you don't have to end up going in the back and digging a hole to determine the winner of the game. Dave Fernandez writes, back in the 1960s, before overtime and sudden death rules, my high school football coach, after seeing us play a hard game that resulted in a tie, said, a tie is like kissing your sister. There's just no thrill. <laughs> I don't know why your football coach sounds like a 1950s mobster, Dave, but yeah, this again goes back to the comment that I said in the first video, which is that a tie game can leave some people feeling like there hasn't been a conclusion to the game. It would sort of be like reading a novel and getting to the end and the author just says, make up your own ending. <laughs> you know, you want to know, you want to get somewhere at the end of the trip, which in this case is playing the game, and I know, I've, I know in, in these uh, two episodes, I've waffled back and forth myself on, do I like ties? Do I want them to be broken? Listen, let's, let's listen to what Meeple Leaf Reviews has to say. And after Jacob's done talking, I will do my best to come up with a definitive personal answer. Hey, Rodney. Something that I wanted to bring up about tiebreakers was that while lots of games have them, some of them don't have a definitive tiebreaker, something that is guaranteed to make sure one player wins and the others lose. That's something I always look for in a tiebreaker. I don't see the point in having three stages of tiebreakers only to decide, well, if it's still a tie, it's a tie. You also mentioned that you weren't sure how you felt about tiebreakers. You weren't sure if you liked them or didn't like them, or are they necessary or are they not? I wanted to make an outrageous claim, an outrageous statement, because I, I like going over the top with things. Imagine if you will, you were playing a cooperative game with your family, and it ended in a tie. You didn't beat the game, you didn't lose against the game, you just tied the game. How would that make you feel? For me, I, I would be outraged at the thought that, well, what was the point of playing that game if it didn't come to any definitive conclusion? There needs to be a definitive tiebreaker where I just barely barely squeak out a win and I, I hold on to that victory. It tastes that much better. Before moving on, I just want to mention, I received a lot of comments on this topic 
So first of all, thank you so much for participating in this conversation. But it also means I really can't read all the comments that we received. However, my sense of it is that the majority of people, like Jacob, want there to be a tiebreaker at the end of a game, if there's a tie, so that you definitively know who won the game. So if you forced me to choose and say what I thought, if you put a gun to my head and said, Rodney, <laughs> should all games have a tiebreaker that's definitive? I would say, well, first of all, I would say, get the gun out of my face. <laughs> this is not that serious. And then I would say, Yes, I agree. I think I, if I had to choose, I would say yes, I always want there to be a definitive winner. But you know what? I don't have to choose. And I am a complex human being. And sometimes I feel differently about things, given the circumstances. Like Arcmaster90 here, he had said, said something that I thought was kind of interesting. Tiebreakers are definitely needed in games such as Viticulture, where it's easy for several players to finish with the same amount of victory points. But I'm fine with no tiebreakers, where it's possible to get 100 or more points. I thought talking about the points was an interesting point to bring up because I think what Arcmaster is getting at, the more possible points there are to score in a game, the rarer it becomes that there will be a tie. And Charles Reese followed up on that point by saying, I'm fine with ties when they are pretty rare in a game. In that case, it can be a fun result. Oh my gosh, we tied. However, if they happen often, then the victory conditions are lacking. Or in other words, it probably depends on the game and the situation. <laughs> so, so there you have it again. <laughs> again, you know, and now I think about it, I think the majority of people's responses were like that, where it's like, I definitely want a tiebreaker, except when, or hey, I don't care if there's tiebreakers or not, eh, except when. There was a lot of people going, it's situational. And Netter's Play here has a video as well who talks about the situation. That's what matters. Do you like tiebreakers or not? That answer is not so simple. Because for me, it all depends on the length of the game. If you have a very short game and there's a tie, well, you can easily solve that problem by playing another game of it. However, if you're playing a lot longer game, like an hour or even two hours or more, then you're investing so much time and so much energy in that game that I prefer there to be several tiebreakers at the end of that game because there can only be one real winner in that case. All right, before we get to the last comment that I'm going to read, there's one other one that I'll share with you from FalconWin00 who wrote, the barcode on Imhotep is driving me nuts. Sorry, Falcon, and everyone else who's going a little batty because of that. As you can see, I turned the box around just for you. Hope you had a more enjoyable viewing experience. So is there a definitive answer to this question? And will that be the last time I say definitive in this video? <laughs> well, we'll see. Blivy wrote what I thought was a pretty comprehensive answer that talks about three factors that he or she felt addressed why it is that sometimes tiebreakers seem okay and other times they feel unsatisfying. It's, it's a lengthy one, but I think it's worth reading, so here we go. One of the factors that Blivy raises as having an influence on how we feel about ties in games is the game itself. On a very basic level, there's a divide between direct and indirect competition. When the objective is to directly defeat the other players and the game ends in a tie, then it's gonna feel like, well, wait a second, how could this battle be over? Nobody won it. <laughs> in that situation, there needs to be tiebreaker rules. In games that are more about expansion and resource management with less emphasis on direct conflict, it's perhaps satisfying to end with, hey, we both did awesome as a tie condition. Another factor that can influence things are the players themselves. In some groups, competition is a major focus and a tie can feel like nobody won. And then you have to treat the next game like a rematch. In more casual play, ties are more likely to feel like everyone won. I thought that was an interesting point because, yeah, in, in a very competitive game, if it ends in a tie, I think that lingers. It sort of hangs in the atmosphere over the game. So the next game, you're kind of like, I need to beat you <laughs> because we tied the last game. I don't have a sense of satisfaction or conclusion here. Whereas if you're playing more casually and it ends in a tie, it's like, hey, who cares? You know, you move on to the next thing. You don't even give it a second thought. The third factor raised here is something I feel we've talked about quite thoroughly in this episode, so I won't go into detail, but it's just simply the tiebreaker rules themselves. In other words, if they're tied closely to the theme and mechanisms of the game, it's probably gonna be more satisfying than if it's just arbitrary. 
if, if you're playing a game that has a lot of risk management, and then at the end, players just roll a die to see it's the highest value to break a tie, it's probably going to feel pretty unsatisfying. And so one of the things I liked about this rundown is that I think it does highlight the reason why for myself, and I think a lot of people, we have shifting views on ties and tiebreakers. Depending on the game, depending on the players, depending on how the rules are written, I might fall on one side or the other. <laughs> so, maybe my conclusion is unsatisfying, like ties are for some of you, I don't know. But I think that's where I land on it. I'd love to hear if you have any other thoughts on the topic. Certainly feel free to put them in the comments below. But, until the next episode, thanks for watching.